We are here inside of Eggplant DAI and we start with our dashboards. So on the QA Summary tab, we can dive into some detail about any given testing date range. This gives us more information about how many tests were run, their outcomes, how much of the model was covered by the test, and even a test case breakdown. The dashboard provides us a higher level series of key performance indicators about the specific model that we have selected here in the upper right hand corner. So this points out which actions have experienced the most errors and some high level data about the test runs that we've made on this particular model. If we go to the designer, this is where we go to actually create our digital twin test model of our application. We can also get to the code suites, the snippets, and the tools that will allow us to capture real customer insights by monitoring a live system. So I'm going to click edit on our model to open up the model for our, AMS, for our ARIS demo. Here you can see that we have our initial state to launch our browser, but we've taken our turbo captured code and just added a little bit of logic to it so that it can recognize when ARIS is already open or when ARIS starts up and is already logged in. This is where the intelligence within Eggplant starts to pull away from the typical macro recorder. Our snippets don't just replay clicks. We can leverage logic and looping and data import and data manipulation and validations and more to allow us to intelligently and flexibly run and test ARIS. Now these global actions on the left represent the TOC, the table of contents menu, that's always available at about the same place within the ARIS interface. And while these 11 actions serve different purposes, they all use the same mechanism in the user interface. So we were able to connect them all to one very simple snippet that uh, makes sure that the talk is visible and then simply clicks the menu item and option that we passed in with these variables in the action. We can have variables in the action, the state, the model scope, and the values of those variables can be static or auto-generated through a variety of methods. Further, we were able to genericize the talk action menu that appears when you select any of the object types into a single state with only five simple actions, and that includes support for custom pin searches. So in this demo, we only included the part form, but we can have the connections coming out of any action depending upon any parameter, value, condition, or value that we want. So in our larger ARIS model, the create new action will decide which state it connects with. There's no need to build a huge complicated model for every path. And speaking of keeping things simple, we're able to simplify our model further by creating sub models that are saved separately. If you look at the search functionality in the search model state, you'll notice each of them has a little green dot on the right side. That indicates that this action links to a separate model. We can pass information into that model, such as what type of object we're searching for, and all the functionality related to the AML search or an advanced search can be stored in that separate model. This allows us to test just the advanced search or to use the advanced search as part of a larger use case. I can also view and set up my test cases here in my model designer. To create a new user story, I simply click new, give it a name, put in uh, UC151, create new deviation. Then I simply go over to my model and I just follow the tasks that I want to uh, perform in order to build the test case. So I'm simply clicking through the user journey to capture that test case. I could also go in here and leverage other test cases that I've already built to build larger test cases and tags and other metadata are used by the DAI algorithms to link use cases together. So when a bug is found, DAI knows which other use cases to test. Now back in the dashboard, I can then go to the controller and I can establish test configurations, which can be either script-based or test-based, uh, sorry, script-based or model-based, and I can leverage the test cases that I just entered 
or I can use exploratory testing, which allows me to provide a number of iterations or uh, let it run until it reaches a desired coverage percentage or let it just run for a given amount of time. I can also control which SUT or SUTs are being used for this specific test configuration. Finally, Insights lets me dive further into the testing itself to see trends in my coverage or to dive further into where my bugs were found or even to predict the bug content or the dev quality based on the testing. 